Hi everyone. Um, I have had quite a few wonderful emails and thank you very much um, from people who are wanting me to show more of the 7 Series. Um, these are the Benina 7 Series machines. As you can see they're a beautiful larger machine and today I'm going to show you how to use the automatic buttonholer. Okay? There's a couple of things I do use when I'm making my buttonholes which you need in your sewing room. And one is a water erasable pen for marking my buttonholes on lighter fabrics. And one is a sewing gauge. Now a lot of you may have sewing gauges but you might not use them correctly or you don't know what, how to use them correctly. So this gauge is especially good for turning up the hems and getting measurements but it is designed for marking your buttonholes. So with a buttonhole, this guide moves up to push up against the size of your button. So I'm going to lay my button right side down onto my guide. I'm going to push this little marker up and if you can see there is a little notch at the top and that mark there will allow for my bar tacks at the bottom and the top of my buttonhole so that when I make my buttonhole for this button it's going to be exactly the right size. It's absolutely brilliant. So now that I've marked my buttonhole I come to my fabric. Now if this is a garment like I'm wearing here, I'll bring it up to here and show you. If this is a garment like I'm wearing here, I can decide to have my buttonholes across or vertical. So horizontal or vertical. So I'm going to do them horizontal today. So I lay my front of my garment down on a bench and all my buttonholes, say I'm going to do two buttonholes and I'll do them three inches apart. I simply mark first off the mark where I want to start my buttonhole and I do not need to mark where I want it to end because my foot is going to do that for me. So the first thing I'm going to do with my water erasable pen is to put a dot where I want to start my buttonhole and it's going to be a centimetre in from my fold line and then I'm going to get a three inch mark because I'm going to do a second buttonhole up here. In fact, I'll do another one in between because I want to show you something else. So I'm going to do one and a half inch buttonholes. Okay, and they're all one centimetre from the edge. So that's all the markings I need to do because these wonderful automatic buttonhole feet have got guides up the side as well. So if you look at this one, this marking is on 2.4 right there. So now I can put that down and I can mark my foot right down here to 2.4. So it's got 0, 1, 2, 3. So it's on 2.4. Yes, I was just making sure I was correct there. So 2.4. So now I'm going to put this buttonhole foot on. And this is the same for a lot of the Beninas. Don't just think this is how you do it on a 7 Series. The other machines have um, automatic feet as well. Now as you can see the thread is sitting on top of my foot. So I'm just going to touch my foot control, put my foot down and back up, lift my knee across, slide my fabric under and get my thread underneath my foot to start sewing. Now I'm just going to line up my needle with my marking on my fabric and all I do is select my buttonhole that I want to do and if you have a look on the screen you've got your ordinary stitches, your fancy stitches, your alphabet, then your buttonhole and you've got amazing amount of buttonholes. I'm going to do two buttonholes today. I'm going to show you the standard buttonhole and then I'm going to show you my favourite buttonhole, which is a stretch buttonhole. So you can see on the screen it's showing you recorded. So it's going to record the length of my buttonhole. So all I need to do is sew from here at the beginning. And when this little red mark gets all the way down to here, I'm going to push my reverse button once. And that will make my length of my buttonhole and every single one I do after that is going to be exactly the same size. Absolutely brilliant. So I'm just going to start sewing. And I'm going to use my foot control for the first one. So I sew down until this red mark that's moving gets to this red mark. 
when the red marks are together, I'm going to push this button once, and then I'm going to keep sewing, and I'm not going to do anything until my machine stops. Isn't that clever? So this machine has stitched my buttonhole, it's now on auto, so you can see it's changed to auto, and it's showing me the length of my buttonhole. Okay, so if I, I'll just put my needle up, take my work out, and my foot has gone right back to the beginning. So what it did when I finished, it shot back to the beginning like that, and I'll show you that again. So I'm going to do my next buttonhole, and all I do this time is line my foot up again, but instead of using my foot control, I'm going to use the start-stop button. Now, a lot of people don't realise they have the start-stop button on these machines. Um, so all you do is you hold this down till your machine starts sewing. And it will sew your whole buttonhole. A little bit clever, isn't it? It's a little bit clever. Now, buttonholes are a lot of fun, um, but you can also make them a little bit more fun. So I'm going to use this buttonhole here, number 53. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a fancy thread. So I'm going to cut my thread, because remember with these big machines, you're not to pull the thread back through this way. You're to cut it and pull your thread from the needle out this way. Okay, it's very, very important. So I'm going to use a pretty thread, which I've lost. Here it is. I'm going to use this pretty variegated thread. And I'm going to show you, I'm just going to show you something else as well. I didn't realise not everybody knew this. When you wind up your threads, they have different ways of keeping them tidy. So this is a metrocene metla thread, and you simply just bring it round and it ties and goes tight in the little groove there. And that makes your thread nice and tidy. Okay, and the same with this poly sheen, you would bring it around and there's a little cut out and you'd make it tidy and that holds your thread. So I'll just unwind that. So this just goes on to here and this one here is about the right size so this just goes on to here. Now do not push that hard, it just goes gently so that your thread spool can move around and I always come off the bottom, bottom of the thread, the back of the thread. So behind here down, around, up, and down. It automatically goes in the right place because your foot always stays up at the highest position. Down here. And to thread it again under here, push it down, slide your thread in, let your right hand go and your left hand go, and it has threaded your needle. I might just show you that again. So as this is coming down, you'll see this changes from green to red, like that, so you can't sew. You hook your thread around here, you push it down till it can't go any further, keep the tension on your thread, slide it across, and you can feel a little click, and you let your thread go, and see how it brings that beautiful big loop up. I love it. So good. Now I like to have my thread down under here when I start, so I'm going to put my foot down once and bring it back up and slide my fabric underneath so that my thread is out of the road. Okay, so it's all underneath. So for this buttonhole, I'll get another piece of fabric to show you, and I'm just making a buttonhole so I'll make it a different size. I'm putting my fabric underneath and I've pushed my stitch number 53, and I love this buttonhole. So I'm just going to show you it. And it's um, very much like a double overlock stitch. So I'm just going to sew down, push my reverse button when I've got to my mark, keep sewing. Oh, I could have just done it without my foot control. And if I want the needle up, because I've asked the needle to stay down, I can just tap it on my foot control. I'll show you that again. Tap my foot control, my needle down. Tap my foot control, my needle up. 
And if I want to leave my needle up, I can push that button. Okay, so I can cut my thread. And I've got no untidy threads at the end of my buttonhole either. Okay? So I'll just show you that again. I'm going to use this button and I'm just going to push it to start it. Oh, uh, that's right, I just cut my thread and I didn't pull it out. So I have no thread in here. So what do you do if you have no thread in there um, and it's gone back up into the machine? Don't pull it back this way. Usually you'll be able to see it snuck in behind here. There it is there. And you can pull it out that way. Okay? So don't go yanking it back. Just cut your thread and pull your thread from this way. So if that ever happens and it's gone back up, please don't yank it back through this way because you may not have a repairman down the road from you, so you do not want to have any jam ups in your machine. So there, there, whoop, behind that little mark, whoop. this is very, very light thread, so you have to uh, just be aware it's very soft. So under there, push down, slide it, and then you can feel it click, and there you go, okay? So again, I like this thread down underneath my foot, so I tap it and I tap it again and then I can just pull my thread out and it just makes it really, really nice and clean and tidy. Okay, nope, what do I do there? Right, so now I'm going to do another buttonhole and I'm not going to do it, I'm just doing a buttonhole for the sake of doing a buttonhole. So now I'm going to use this button. And because I've already set it, it's going to stitch it beautifully. Except for I've done something wrong, I know. I think I confused my machine, ladies and gentlemen. So what I've done is somehow I confused my machine there and I made a mistake. So, what do you do if that happens? You push clear. Clear your buttonhole. Lift it up and start again. So redo your marking. I'm going to push my stitch length down here. Not sure what I did, but I made a mistake, which is good for you to see. Remember to push your button when you get to the end. And there you have your buttonhole. Now, if your button holder didn't work, you can actually fix it yourself. So if you need to recalibrate your um, buttonhole foot, you can do it yourself. I'm going to cut the thread. And there you have your buttonhole. See how the beautiful different colours you get with your buttonhole? I love it, absolutely love it. Now look what happens when you take your buttonhole foot off and you put your ordinary foot on. Do you know what I do? I use this as an applique stitch and I have to show you because I love it. Oh, I'll do it on this one so it shows up better. You're going to absolutely, absolutely love this. See, if I don't clip my threads, I have to, um, if I don't use the cutter, you have to go through and clip your threads. So just make sure you do that if you haven't used your cutter. So cut is so much better. Now check this out. So this is on buttonhole setting. And I've just put the ordinary foot on, so it thinks it's sewing that stitch, but look what you can do with it. And you can speed that up, and you can sew anywhere you like. So you can turn it sideways, you can go use it as an applique stitch. I love this stitch, so I use this a lot. So I kind of use it like couching and I use it around appliques and I use it just as a fancy stitch but I always use variegated thread because it looks beautiful. So this is the buttonhole stitch number 53 and I just put the ordinary foot on. So this is something I really, really like to do. So it's a great way of using your buttonhole stitch. Isn't that brilliant? I absolutely, absolutely love it. So I use that a lot. It looks really, really, really good. Now, to cut your buttonholes, you have a quick unpick in your toolbox. 
when people are going to do their buttonholes, they always get a bit scared about going across the end. So there's two ways you can do it. You can either get your cutter and go from the end of your buttonhole and go to the centre, go turn it around, go from the end of your buttonhole and meet it at the centre so that you're not going to cut through or you can get a pin and you can put a pin at the end of your buttonhole and then you can get your cutter and go from one end and you go through the middle and you go right up to your pin. I prefer this method of going from end to end. I think it's very safe but I do do that method sometimes depending on the fabric. Now the last thing I'm going to show you today is how to sew on a button by your machine. So you've got this wonderful tool here and um, you just scroll, oh let's go open here like I showed you, that button there. Here's your designs, you can touch that button and it makes it bigger so you can see all the buttonhole menu. But number 60 is sewing on a button and it's showing you that it's doing a four width and a zero length so you do not need to drop your feed dogs down. But what you can do is use either a number 24 foot or a darning foot number 9 or you can buy the correct foot number 18 which is the one I'm going to show you today. And the reason why it's better because if you have a look it's designed for buttons so it's got little grippy feet it's got a little bar in the middle so that your button will be raised a little bit so there's movement in it and it's absolutely brilliant. So I'm going to pop this foot on and find my button and I'm going to stitch on a button. Now I wouldn't use silky thread because it's not strong so I'm going to cut my thread Oops. Yep. and oh by the way keep all these little bits of thread, do not ever throw them out because um, I actually sew them all together and make a scarf. So keep all your little bits of thread and I'll do that on a video one of these days and show you. It's pretty cool. So I'm going to take this thread off, put my standard metrosine on because it's a good strong polyester thread and thread up my machine. You're really going to know how to thread your machine after today. There you go. And there there, and under, push it down and slide it across. Okay, brilliant. Okay, now 99.9% .9 of buttons are the same width, okay? But do be aware if you notice a button slightly different width, if it's handmade, you may need to adjust your stitch width, which is this button here. So if you look here, that says four millimeters, if you adjust it, it will change yellow, and that means you've changed the stitch width. So if you're not sure, you can test it. Okay. So if I adjusted that and I couldn't remember what my machine setting was, just push clear, and it will take you back to the machine setting. Okay. So I'm going to put my foot over top of my button, and I'm lining it up. So let me just show you with my stylus so that these grippy teeth are holding my foot and I can see if I turn my balance wheel that my needle is going to go down right in the correct hole. So always check that first before you start. Okay? Now you don't have to do anything, um, but if you're scared, put your speed down <laughs> and you can push start or you can use a foot control if you're really worried. Now what it's going to do is it's going to lock off first and then it's going to zigzag. So once you know that's in the right place, you can just put it faster and put this down. And that's how you sew a button on. Absolutely brilliant. Lift your knee up, pull your button foot backwards because of the bar, and then take your fabric out. And there you have your button. Now it's nice and tight but it's loose enough to go through your button so you've got movement in it. Now I'm going to cut that off and show you again. Okay, it's absolutely brilliant. You will never hand stitch your buttons on again after this because you've got it on your machine. Shall I use the other foot to show you 
that you don't need to have this foot but it is easier so that's the number 18 foot I'll use the one most of you might have in your stash and that's the number 9 so this is a darning foot and a lot of you ladies and gentlemen might have this so this is a really good foot as well but the other foot is just a little bit stronger because it holds it in place, the number four to, uh, 18, beg your pardon. Now with this one, I just need to be a little bit careful to make sure I've got it all in the right place. And again, stitch, does the zigzag, and I hold the button this time because there's nothing to hold it. Okay, same thing. What it doesn't do is that's very tight. So it doesn't give you that allowance for through a thicker buttonhole. Okay, so it's very, very tight down on there. Whereas when I did it before on the 18, it was a lot looser. Okay, but brilliant, brilliant machine because everything is fully automatic. So I really hope that you'll use these buttonhole stitches and the buttonhole especially and the buttonhole so on foot um, because it's absolutely brilliant so again the button sew on foot is foot number 18 and it's a brilliant brilliant foot okay so there's a little bit of insight into doing buttonholes and sewing on buttons on your Benina 7 series so I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll be back with more sewing <laughs>